Happy Thursday to y'all. Hey, that's good news, eh, Thursday. We are in the marathon psalm, Psalm 119. We're getting near to the end. Psalm 119, we are in verse 122. It's a long chapter. But this is the section uh, called, I think it's called Ayin. I'm, I, it starts with the uh, the Hebrew letter A-Y-I-N, I-N, I think, or something like that. So, it's um, verse 122 is the, the cry of somebody that's having a hard time, which we see a lot of times in the Psalms, right? I mean, most of the times. Let's be real. What my dad said is true. If I didn't have any problems, I'd never pray. Right, so it, it does. Um, the hard times are what drives us to God. In our weakness, it drives us to the One who is strong. So here we go, Psalm one nineteen, verse one twenty two. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. Don't leave me to the mercy of my enemies, for I have done what is just and right. Lord, don't leave me to the mercy of my enemies, for I've done what is just and right. Well, I thought about that, and uh, it's good advice because, A, okay, the enemies of all that is good, the enemies of the cross, have no mercy. So don't leave me to zero mercy, Lord. You know who I'm up against. Um, Remember, in the world that we live in, When you do what is just and right, there's a good chance you won't be rewarded for doing what is just and right by men on the side of heaven. Your just and right behavior, we, we need to remember, we need to do that before God and appeal to Him for mercy and for reward. Make sure that you do your good deeds in the sight of God for him to see and not for men to see because they're not going to show you mercy. They're they're in fact going to attack you for doing what is just and right because you're crossing their will. They don't like it when God is made manifest in the world. When he shows up through the good deeds of his people, those that are evil will not like it. They will get mad at it. They will fight it. God rewards those whose hearts are completely His, the Bible tells us. So when you're doing your good deeds before God, you are on the side of what is right. And uh, when evil gets mad at you for doing your good deeds, when when men and women and, and uh, just the forces of evil and your enemy, the adversary, Satan, doesn't want you to do anything that is right and good. And when you do it, if you tick them off, Don't worry, you have God backing you. So ask God for mercy when men give you none. Appeal to God for his mercy. And what that means is this. Ask Jesus for more of the love that he showed us on the cross. Because what did he give us on the cross? Unfailing, unconditional love. And Lord, I need more of your mercy in my life this day. Verse 122 says, Lord, please guarantee me a blessing Don't let the arrogant oppress me. My eyes are straining to see your rescue, to see the truth of your promise fulfilled. Lord, I'm feeling a little desperate. It's a good way to pray. Lord, I'm desperate. I need your help. David said it before, and it is true today. Okay, and this is the truth of these two verses. The arrogant and the rich and the dogs who eat dogs out there are the ones who are on top of the heap. And their position and their power have made it so they stay in power, in control. They oppress the poor. The rich get richer. The poor stay poor. The rich buy off judges. We've seen this time and again. It's in the scriptures in Isaiah 1. The the rich buy off judges and the ones who are eking out a living, barely scraping by, um, are kept in that desperate state. The rich indulge in their twisted pleasures of the world while the just... And those who are trying to bring justice to the world 
um, are seeing tinier little results, little by little. But those that are right are trying desperately to see God's justice and rescue come. And they're waiting to see, Lord, I know your promises are going to come true. I need to see your help. Please, over the horizon, is there a glimpse of your coming of your justice coming to this world. I think, I, I'm specifically thinking this morning about those in international justice mission, okay? Um, evil rich men go and they, um, they, in, they indulge in sex trafficking. They take young people that are um, um, kidnapped or recruited, kept in, kept in slavery in the modern day world. An international justice mission is full of lawyers and and missionaries and judges that are trying desperately. And yesterday on Instagram, it made my heart glad to see three girls set free. Okay, you think about how it must feel to know that okay, every person matters. So one person at a time, we make a difference in their life. But Lord, these evil men—they keep coming in waves. Lord, when will you stop it? Lord, come in all your justice. Come and take out the evil and the arrogant. And that's a good way to pray. Remember, the one matters to Jesus. So when you go and do that one thing to help one person, it does make a difference. And verse 124 says this, I am your servant. I am your servant, Lord. Please deal with me in unfailing love and teach me your ways. Give understanding to me. I want to understand your laws. Please, Lord, I'm your servant. Forgive my sin. Breathe your life into me. Once again, set my heart right on the right path this day. Um, as I walk this rickety path uphill, give me more of your unfailing love. Jesus said that the way of righteousness in this world would be narrow and uh, it would be a hard path, but it is going to the top of the mountain. Um, give me, Lord, on this journey, understanding. This is a good prayer. We need understanding, don't we? Um, Spurgeon said this, I have voluntarily hired myself to you, God. I've chosen the things that please you, and I've taken hold of your promises. Now, this is all the wages I crave of you. Give me understanding. Asking God for a little insight into this world. We may expect a master to teach his own servant the meaning of his own orders. So God has given us a way to live. Now we ask him for his character and his insight and his understanding. Um, and verse 126, this seems like a brash prayer, but this is a good prayer. Lord, it's time for you to act. For these evil people have violated your instructions and they can't get away with it. It's time for you to act, O oh Lord. The commentator said this this morning. We admire the holy boldness of this psalmist. It almost seems rude for a man to tell God, it's time for you to act. Yet many who walk with God understand the desperate plea of the psalmist perfectly. He's so needy and dependent on God that it is good and right to make his request so boldly. The air is thick with the fog of injustice in this world, right? So, how does a little kid talk to his father when there's a problem? Dad, help me. Dad, please turn the light on. Dad, help me. I'm stuck, right? The wicked try and block God's people, but God the Father has their back. And so asking God to act like a little child would plead for his dad to do something is not impertinent. It is not rude. It is the cry of a child in desperate need of help. And when you see something that needs to be fixed, Make your case. Remind God of his promises. Lord, come and rescue. Lord, help. Verse 127 says, Lord, I love your commands more than gold, even the finest gold. Why is that? Why do we love God's word more than gold? Well, Bridges said this, Can gold, even the finest gold, offer to me blessings such as these? Can gold heal my broken heart? Can gold give relief to my wounded spirit? Can gold give me any peace or prospect to comfort me on my deathbed? No. But the word of God 
can heal my broken heart. Your word, Lord, can give relief to my wounded spirit. Your word has peace and prospect and comfort for me, even on my deathbed. That's why we love God and his word more than gold, more than the things of this world, because it is eternal. It's never going to leave us, let us down. Verse 128 says this, Each of your commands is right. I want to do what is right. I want to be on the side of what is right. And that is why I hate every false way. All God's precepts concerning everything in this world are right. With great confidence, the writer proclaimed the mercy and the inerrancy of God's word. God's word is right, not wrong. It's right concerning all things. It doesn't need a defense. There's right and there's wrong in this world. God's word is right. When the Bible gives us history, it is right and true. The events actually happen as described. When the Bible gives us poetry, it is right and true. The feeling and experiences who are real for the writer and ring true to our human hearts when we hear them. When the Bible gives us prophecy, it is right. And all the Bible's prophecies that have been given have been fulfilled up to this point. Not one of them hasn't been, and they will continue to be fulfilled. Even in 1948, the Bible promised Israel will get its land back. That happened. So God's word is coming true even up till recently. When the Bible gives us um, events described, they have been true. Even Josephus, the historian who wasn't even a Christian, and Tacitus, they have backed up the Bible's events. When the Bible gives us instructions, it is right and it is true. It truly does tell us the will of God and the best way to live. When the Bible gives us um, truth about God, it is always proved to be right and true. It reveals to us the nature and the heart of God. Do you want to know what the nature and the heart of God are? The Bible tells us that His Spirit inspired the Word of God. And then when you read His Word, like we're going over this today, we get His Spirit, right? And we want his truth and spirit embedded deep in our character. So this is a prayer today for us, okay? Lord, we need your nature put into us this day through the spirit. We need your heart and its purity put into us today. We need your courage to be put into us today. And we need your joy, don't we? Lord, we need you. And so today, as we're contemplating this truth in a world that's harsh sometimes, remember, you have as much of Jesus as Peter and James and John did. You know, yeah, he's not sitting in the chair next to me physically, but he's here with me and he's there with you. Jesus said he would come to us and not leave us alone through the Holy Spirit. So today, when you're looking at this truth that we're living in a world that isn't fair, remember the God that will make it right is in you to work with you to make it fairer right now, but he's also in you to give you that hope. So this is Dan Bremnis. I want to close in a prayer today. Uh, I guess Facebook uh, didn't like the fact that I was playing that song. Um, Sometimes it does that. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, thank you for your people. And I pray, Lord, that they will uh, go out with joy, be led forth in peace, and that you will use them to make a difference in this world, Father God. I thank you that you hear our prayers. I thank you that you are just, that you know our hearts. We pray, Lord, that you will make us bolder in a generation that needs bold light-filled people. May we proclaim your hope today by how we live. May your hearts fill us with, may your heart fill our heart. Holy Spirit, come and help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys have a good day. Mm -hmm.